Hello friends, this video on Life Processes Part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now study about the lungs, which are the uh, functional units or which are the main places where the actual absorption of oxygen takes place in the respiratory system. So lungs are spongy elastic organs as you can see here. These are the two lungs which we have in our body. They are spongy and elastic. Elastic means they can, they, they can increase or decrease in size. So the, it has got that flexibility. Located in the thoracic cavity as I explained just now before some time. So the lower surface of the lungs rests on the diaphragm. I mentioned before right the diaphragm denotes the end of the thoracic cavity. So the lower portion of the two lungs the lower surface rests on the diaphragm. There are two lungs in the human body the right lung and the left lung. So which is our right lung. This is the right lung and this is the left lung. Now the lung, each of these lungs is again divided into different regions. So the right lung is divided into three lobes. Lobes are nothing but the regions. So the right lung is divided into two lobes and the left lung is divided into two lobes. The right lung is divided into three lobes. So these are the two lobes in the left lung. So this upper lobe and the lower lobe. So the upper lobe is known as superior lobe and the lower lobe is known as inferior lobe. Superior means above. So the above, the lobe which is located on the above side is superior and the one which is on the lower side is inferior. Now similarly the right lung is also divided into three lobes. So this the above one is the superior lobe and here this below one is the inferior lobe and this lobe which lies in the middle of the superior and inferior is known as the middle lobe. Right? So this is how the lung is divided into different lobes. Enclosed by a two layered membrane. As I said lungs are the organs where the actual exchange of gases take place. So these organs should be located well inside the body and well protected. So to ensure that protection it is surrounded by a two layered membrane. So here you can see two black lines right. So that is the double layered membrane and the space between these two is known as the pleural cavity. So this two layered membrane is known as pleura. Pleura is the name of this membrane and pleural cavity is the space between the two membranes. So this space, this white colored space that is the pleural cavity and this pleural cavity contains a pleural fluid to lubricate and prevent friction. So the presence of a fluid outside the lungs will, will lubricate it, will make the surface slippery and it will prevent pre friction because we do not want any kind of friction. Friction is nothing but resistance to the flow of anything. So we do not want any kind of resistance here. So in order to prevent friction, the pleural cavity is filled with a pleural fluid. Lungs play an important role in breathing and oxygen absorption. Now since the lungs are the organs which actually absorbs the oxygen which we breathe in that is the reason it is elastic because when we breathe in that extra air which we are taking inside our body that needs some extra space as well. So these lungs can expand at that time and can fill in the air inside them. So it plays a very important role in breathing and oxygen absorption. So we will look into the next slides that how exactly the lungs help in oxygen absorption. The next is bronchi. What is bronchi? As I said, the trachea divides into thinner tubes called bronchi as it enters the thoracic cavity. So here you can see this is the trachea as it is entering the thoracic cavity. So this cavity is the thoracic cavity. It will divide into bronchi. So how will the bronchi look like? Let me divide the lung into the different lobes. So this is the superior lobe. This is the inferior lobe. This is the middle lobe. And here we have the superior lobe and the inferior lobe. Now once the trachea enters into the thoracic cavity, what happens? It has to enter into the lungs now. 
right so while entering into the lungs this entire thick tracheal tube doesn't enter itself so it divides into branches and these branches are known as bronchi so the right bronchus that means it will divide into two branches one is right bronchus and the other one is left bronchus so the right bronchus will enter inside the right lung and the left bronchus will enter inside the left lung so this is the left lung and this is the right lung correct so since in the right lung we have three different lobes so therefore the bron there will be three bronchi reaching into each lobe so how will the bronchus looks like it will be something like this one branch getting into the superior lobe one branch getting into the inferior lobe and one branch entering into the middle lobe so this is how it will look like Similarly, when it enters into the left lung, then what will happen? So one bronchus will go into the inferior lobe and the other bronchus will go into the superior lobe. So that is why it is said that the right bronchus divides into three bronchi and the left bronchus divides into two bronchi. That's because there are two lobes in the left lung and there are three lobes in the right lung. So what does these bronchi do? They do nothing. They just carry the air which was being carried by trachea inside the lungs. Clear? Okay, so now the air is finally reaching the lungs. Now the bronchioles and alveoli. Now bronchi and bronchioles, the names are quite similar, right? So what are bronchioles? Each bronchus further divides into finer branches called bronchioles. So here you can see that this is the trachea. So this trachea as it entered in the, inside the lungs, it broke down into the bronchus and each of these bronchi then further divides into smaller branches to form bronchioles. So the further branching of bronchi are known as bronchioles. Each bronchiole ends in tiny cluster of air chambers called alveoli. That means first there was a thick tube called trachea. Then trachea, while entering into the lungs, they divide into bronchi. Each bronchi further divides into bronchioles. And each bronchiole then further end up in alveoli. So what are alveoli? They are a cluster of tiny air chambers. Air chamber means they are like, they look like balloon. So alveoli are balloon-like structures which are filled with air. So see, this is the magnified image of an alveoli. So the small alveoli, which look like branches in this picture, but when you actually see its magnified image, they look like this. So see, they are balloon-like structures. And what are these balloons? They are nothing but air chambers. So they are air-filled balloons. So this air is the one which has been taken in from the atmosphere through the nostrils. So now these alveoli will actually transfer this air inside our body so the actual exchange of gas will take place at the alveoli level so alveoli provide a surface where the exchange of gases can take place so inside the lungs we have the bronchi bronchioles and the alveoli so alveoli are balloon like structures which are filled with air and the actual exchange of gases take place along the surface of the alveoli so the alveoli has alveolar duct and the walls of these alveoli are covered with capillaries so walls of alveoli contain an extensive network of blood vessels that is capillaries so you can see here that these are the alveoli the balloon like structures and these red color structures which you see they are nothing but blood vessels what are blood vessels as the name suggests they are vessels which carry blood and blood is flowing throughout our body right so the alveoli are in direct contact with the blood so that means if the alveoli can transfer the air into the blood the job is done the blood will then carry this oxygen to different parts of the body so different part of the body will receive the gas right so the actual gaseous exchange takes place between alveoli and the blood vessels and what are capillaries capillaries are the smallest blood vessels right so actual exchange of air take place between alveoli and the blood vessels called capillaries so because for this purpose 
the walls of the alveoli are very thin they have very thin walls as well as the walls of the capillaries are also very thin so that the exchange of gases can take place effectively and easily so that is why alveoli are called as the functional units of lungs so whatever we studied in the respiratory system we saw that the purpose of this respiratory system is exchange of gases correct and this exchange of gases did not take place anywhere either in the nostrils or nasal cavity or trachea or bronchi or bronchioles. So the actual exchange of gases took place in the alveoli. So they are the functional units of lungs. All other parts of the respiratory system, they only helped in the passage of air. They helped the air to reach the lungs. Right? So alveoli is the place where the actual exchange of gases will take place and after that the gas will be transferred to the capillaries which are the blood vessels and these blood vessels will then transport the blood through the to the rest of the body that means it will ensure that the uh, that the air or the gas reaches each and every cell of the body and then inside each and every cell the oxidation of the assimilated molecules will happen that means the oxidation of food which we talked about glucose will get converted into carbon dioxide hydrogen uh, water and energy so that process will take place inside each and every cell of our body right so i hope you got the entire um, structure that means how this respiration is actually happening how lungs help in absorption of oxygen because inside the lungs lungs are actually like bags so inside the lungs we actually have so many different things that is bronchi bronchioles and alveoli so what did we see so far we saw that the air which we breathe in they enter through the nostrils then they reach the nasal cavity and then the pharynx from pharynx it reaches the trachea from trachea it branches out to form the bronchi the bronchi further branches out to bronchioles and the bron bronchioles then ends up in balloon like tiny air chambers called alveoli the alveoli are connected or they have the um, they, their walls contain an extensive network of the blood vessels called capillaries so these blood vessels will then transport it to the rest of the body now this portion that how the blood vessels actually transport it to the rest of the body that is what we are going to discuss in the transportation part so after the respiration is over we are going to talk about transportation right so this portion that how actually the gases are transported to each and every corner of the body that we will dig in the transportation topic now once it reaches to each and every corner of the body that means it reaches each cell of the body now inside the cell will take place the cellular respiration that means oxidation of food will take place to release energy right now when the oxidation of food will take place what will happen carbon dioxide will be released and this carbon dioxide it will again follow the same path backwards so the cells will release that carbon dioxide into the blood vessels so these capillaries will again bring it back to the alveoli from alveoli it will come to the bronchioles bronchi and then through the same pathway carbon dioxide will be given out so now you understand how oxygen is taken in and how carbon dioxide is given out. Clear? So now the question is, when we breathe in this extra air which is coming in, where and how is this extra space created? Because for this extra air which is coming in, we need some space, right? So in this case, air pressure also plays a very important role. Because for the air to move from one place to another, there has to be some difference in pressure so that it can move, right? So let us see that what happens when we actually... Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.